love for God. What is love? Love, according to the Oxford Dictionary, is a strong feeling of affection. If this definition is analyzed, love could be many things. Love could be desire or love could be lust. To go more in depth, love can be of many types. Love for yourself, love for objects, love for desire, motherly love, and the list goes on and on. Today's topic of discussion is in fact the greatest type of love, love for the sake of God. Love for the sake of God is without a doubt the strongest type of love. This is due to the fact that love itself can only exist as long as the reason to love exists. For example, a man in love with the beauty of his wife will only love her as long as her beauty exists. If she loses her beauty due to old age or any other reason, his love for her diminishes, whereas love for the sake of God can never diminish as God himself is the ever-existing, the ever-living. Now the question arises, why should I love for the sake of God? What's wrong with just loving? Well, there are numerous narrations of the Prophet peace and blessings be upon him and verses in the Quran which speak about the virtues of those who love each other for the sake of God. The first hadith. Anas, may God be pleased with him, reported that the Prophet uh, peace and blessings be upon him said, anyone who possesses three attributes will experience the sweetness of belief that he loves God and his messenger more than anything else, that he loves someone for the sake of God alone, and that he hates the idea of reverting to disbelief as much as he would hate being thrown into a fire. The second hadith, Mu'av, may God be pleased with him, said, I heard the messenger of God, peace and blessings be upon him, say, God the mighty and exalted says, those who love one another for my majesty will have members of lights. The prophets and martyrs will end with them. After reading these two narrations of our holy prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, it shows that this type of love is held very high in our religion and even the prophets and martyrs will be jealous of it. Now that we know what the strongest type of love is and its virtue, how do we love for the sake of God? Loving for the sake of God means to love for someone what God loves and hate for them all that God hates. This means to enjoin good and forbid them from evil, making them the best Muslim they can be and securing a future in paradise with them. The Quran says, meaning, Say, O Muhammad, if you do love God, follow me. God will love you and forgive you your sins, for God is oft forgiven, most merciful. Surah Al Imran, Ayah 31. Love for the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, will open the doors to attain God's love. By emulating the ways of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, we have found our guide to attaining the love for God. This can be seen from the five pillars of Islam. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, had said, Pray in the manner that you have seen me praying. In performing all acts of worships, we refer to the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, for the ways that he has guided us with. In a hadith narrated by Imam Muslim, the Messenger of God, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Whoever possesses the following three qualities will taste the sweetness of faith, that is, the one to whom God and his Messenger becomes dearer than anything else. And he who loves a person, and he loves him only for the sake of God, and he who hates to revert to disbelief, because he hates to be thrown into the hellfire. What are some of the ways that we can emulate the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him? First, read the Quran every single day. 
The Quran is a miracle of Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, that will last till the end of time. Thus, be consistent in the reading of the Quran all year round. Even if we were only able to read one ayah, how great it would be to reflect upon its meaning. One of the companions, Abu Darda, may God be pleased with him, is said to have asked the Prophet's wife, Aisha, may God be pleased with her, about the morals and manners of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. And she remarked that his morals and manners were just according to the Holy Quran. And he was pleased with the things described to be pleasing to God in the Quran and was displeased by the things disapproved by God. Ibn Masood, may God be pleased with him, once said, The Prophet peace and blessings be upon him asked me to recite the Holy Quran for him. Ibn Masood said to the Prophet peace and blessings be upon him, Should I recite the Quran before you, whereas it has been revealed unto you? At this the Prophet peace and blessings be upon him said, I like it more to hear the Quran from someone else. Then Ibn Masood recited Surah An-Nisa. After Ayah 41 was recited, the Prophet peace and blessings be upon him said, This is enough. When Ibn Masood saw the face of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, he saw tears rolling down both his eyes. The second way, follow his Sunnah to keep him close to our hearts. Friday is the best day of the week for Muslims, and so let us follow closely the Sunnah of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. For each week, Muslims are urged to increase their taqwa, God consciousness, and remembrance of God, the Most High, and we hear the call to send blessings to our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, in the khutbah, Friday sermon. God and his angels send blessings on the Prophet. O oh, you that believe, send your blessings on him and salute him with all respect. Surah Al-Azab, Ayah 56 There are many ways of the Prophet peace and blessings be upon him that we can follow in relation to Fridays. The Prophet peace and blessings be upon him said, For whoever recited Surah Al-Kahf on Friday, it will light for him a light between the two Fridays, the current and the next one. Also, as a motivation for Muslims who head to the mosque for the congregational prayer, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, On Friday, the angels come to stand on the doors of the mosque. The angels record who comes first. If the Imam starts delivering the speech, the angel clothe their files and come to listen to the speech. At the mosques, uh, as we contribute a sum of money for donation, it is an act that is encouraged by the Prophet peace and blessings be upon him. Abu Huraira, may God be pleased with him, reported God's messenger peace and blessings be upon him as saying, Charity does not in any way decreases the wealth. And the servant who forgives, God adds to his respect. And the one who shows humility, God elevates him in the estimation of the people. I once encountered a blind man in a lift. As he entered, he started feeling the braille characters on the lift buttons. Later, he apologized for making me wait, explaining that as the lift was newly installed, he wanted to familiarize himself with the button for the false story. I then carelessly replied to him, It's okay, it's interesting to see you read it. In retrospect, I learned two things from it. Firstly, is the need to be more sensitive towards others. Secondly, I also realized that this man was really dependent on his walking stick, his acute sense of hearing and touch, his sharp memory and his familiarity with his surroundings. As a Muslim, the Quran and the Prophet's peace and blessings be upon him sooner should serve as our walking stick for us to hold 
dear to. Otherwise, would we not be wandering around lost? To attain love for God and in turn His love, we need to continue emulating the ways of the Prophet peace and blessings be upon him in acts of worship and all aspects of life, as he is the best example sent to mankind. The Quran should be more than just a source of thoughts for our use, and the history of the Prophet peace and blessings be upon him and his companions should not be reduced to stories that we read and then forget. May we receive the intercession of the Messenger of God, peace and blessings be upon him on the Day of Judgment and be acknowledged as part of his Ummah. O oh God, let your blessings come upon Muhammad and the family of Muhammad. Amen.